Welcome to my channel. Today, I'll be sharing Evan's story, how his wife cheated on him. Before we begin, please subscribe to our channel, and let's dive into the story. My name is Evan. When my wife suddenly went on a business trip, her best friend unexpectedly moved into our house. I snooped on their chat records and discovered they had a common master. I never dreamed that the wife who once vowed to love me for a lifetime would betray me. That day, my wife Alice returned home very late. She was dressed in a v-neck tie-fitting skirt that accentuated her curves, and due to bending over, the neckline was open, revealing a glimpse of her assets. After three years of marriage, my wife's figure remained in excellent shape, her skin as smooth as cream, captivating me endlessly. She seemed exhausted didn't even bother to change into pajamas after showering, and simply flopped onto the bed. I embraced her body, hinting at an intimate moment, believing Alice would understand my intentions. However, she claimed to be too tired, shrugged off my advances, leaving me slightly disappointed. But seeing how exhausted she was, I decided to give her a relaxing massage to help her unwind. As I extended my hand, I noticed a butterfly tattoo on Alice's waist that I had never seen before. My hand slid down from her smooth back, landing on the beautiful butterfly, stirring a strange feeling within me. When did Alice get this tattoo, and why was I unaware of it? Kissing her, I inquired, Darling, when did you get this tattoo? A mischievous glint flashed in Alice's eyes as she replied, I got it with Christine last week. Looks beautiful, right? Christine got hers on her thigh. Do you want to see? I playfully smacked her backside, pretending to be displeased, saying, What are you talking about? Alice teased, You say one thing but think another. Who knows what's on your mind? At that moment, I had no idea what the tattoo symbolized, but soon, my life would be turned upside down by this butterfly. The following day, before I even finished work, I received a message from Alice, Honey, I have to go on a business trip to San Francisco. Christine's lease has expired, so she's staying at our place temporarily. Can you entertain her for me? When I went to pick up Christine, I almost didn't recognize her. Standing before me was a stunningly attractive woman in a one-shoulder dress, exuding unparalleled allure. Her tall and slender figure combined with her enticing appearance made her captivate every passing glance. Christine nonchalantly waved and greeted me, her movements causing a captivating sway and highlighting her ample charms. I approached her, complimenting, Christine, you've become so beautiful after these few months, rolling her eyes, Christine quipped, Evan, insincere as always. How does Alice not surpass me in any way? Remember when you chose her over me in college? She couldn't let go of past jealousies from those long-gone days. I remained silent and drove Christine back home, arranging for her to stay in the guest bedroom. In the middle of the night, a sudden urge to use the bathroom woke me. As I got up, I noticed light coming from Christine's room. Intrigued by why she was awake at such an hour, I silently approached, peeping through the door, only to see Christine sitting in front of her computer in a nightgown, engrossed in typing. After a while, she suddenly burst into maniacal laughter and then removed her cool nightgown. From under the bed, she retrieved a small whip and lightly tapped her thighs. Lo and behold, a butterfly tattoo akin to the one on Alice's waist adorned her thigh. Christine's laughter turned into soft moans, and she writhed her body like a white snake. I never expected to witness this scene, and I noticed Christine's desktop background was a butterfly, reminding me of the tattoo on Alice's body. The tattoo seemed to match theirs. Returning to my room in secret, I pondered the scene I had witnessed and couldn't shake it off. Unexpectedly, I had a night full of nightmares, dreaming about Alice engaging in promiscuous activities with different men, betraying me repeatedly. Each time I woke up from the nightmare, my body was drenched with sweat, leaving me uncomfortable. Deciding to take a shower, I found the bathroom door closed, with water running inside, 
along with the sound of Christine humming. On my way back, I noticed Christine's laptop on the table. On a whim, I entered her room and opened the laptop. Christine's WhatsApp was logged in, and I opened the chat between her and Alice, dated from the previous evening. Christine, Sister Alice, have you met the owner? Alice, yes, the owner brought a few friends, including three Nigerians. Christine, are you comfortable? Alice, yes, the owner has assigned me a task again, this time it's involving five individuals. Christine, you must complete the owner's tasks diligently. Alice, yes, I will do my best. The conversation ended there, and the previous history was cleared. My emotions mingled with disappointment and excitement. Disappointed by Alice's infidelity, yet thrilled by the uncovering of her hidden secret. It seemed even the proud and charming Alice had a more open side to her personality. The truth was now apparent, Christine had betrayed me and had the same owner as Alice. Both women had the same butterfly symbol, possibly a mark of identification. Considering the situation between Alice and me, thoughts of divorce crossed my mind. However, without concrete evidence, I couldn't confront Alice. Despite the disturbing images in my head, I reached a decision. Divorce was inevitable, but first, I needed proof of her infidelity, evidence that likely resided with Christine. The next day, while driving her out to eat, Christine dozed off in the passenger seat. I glanced at her and noticed she was wearing a low-cut white dress, emphasizing her curves and her legs tightly closed together. If you have any more text to translate or need further assistance, feel free to let me know. I suddenly felt the urge to peek inside the car, but I resisted. Then, Christine's phone rang urgently, startling her awake from her sleep. After she answered the call, she seemed uneasy and said, Evan. Can you drive me to the Walmart supermarket? My friend left something for me there. I nodded and replied, sure, then turned the car towards the Walmart supermarket. I parked the car in the underground parking lot of Walmart, and Christine went upstairs to retrieve the items, while I got out of the car, lit a cigarette, and waited for her to return. Suddenly, I noticed a white car in the parking lot, and it was shaking, indicating some intimate activity was taking place inside. All adults, nothing too surprising. The car window cracked open slightly, and from my angle, I could see inside the car. I was slightly exhilarated, unable to resist my curiosity. Maybe the recent stress was pushing me to seek some diversion. While pretending to smoke, I inched closer and the couple inside were oblivious to my presence as they continued their interactions passionately. The man was dark and plump, while the woman was semi-naked, serving him. Her hair veiled her face, but her fit body and fair skin were still visible. I thought to myself, such a good white cabbage being wasted on a pig, my gaze focused on the woman's waist, where she had a butterfly tattoo similar to the one on Alice's waist. I was shocked. Wasn't Alice supposed to be meeting the owner in San Francisco? How could she be here? Was she always local? Was her owner giving her new tasks for other men to enjoy in front of her husband? Was Christine cooperating with her, leading me to this parking lot? Anger simmered within me as I took a step forward then retreated. I couldn't confront them now. What should I do? The car inside was still rocking intensely, and as a sentinel, I waited, anticipating their exit and hoping to see the woman's face. Suddenly, a tap on my shoulder made me turn around to find Christine standing behind me, holding a large bag. She smiled and asked, What are you staring at, Evan? You seem so engrossed. Flustered, I replied, Oh, nothing, just smoking here, curiously. Christine peered into the car, blushing instantly. She spat, shameless. I wasn't sure if she was insulting the couple in the car or me, but it was probably aimed at me. Abruptly, Christine fiercely pinched my arm, her face flushing as she angrily accused, still looking? I told you to look. 
Her cute demeanor reminded me of her habit of pinching people's arms back in school. She grabbed my arm, pulled me into the car, where our actions naturally followed suit. After I regained my senses, the white car had vanished without a trace, and I never got a clear view of the woman's face. Christine silently got dressed, with a cigarette in my mouth, pondering whether the woman was Alice. Christine softly spoke, Evan, we. Glancing at her, I smiled and said, you want me to take responsibility for you, don't you? Christine's face fell slightly, and she withdrew a packet of cigarettes from her bag, lit one, and puffed away. I observed Christine's disheveled appearance, flushed face, and partially exposed body, creating a seductive and decadent atmosphere. During dinner, I saw Christine unexpectedly cooking in the kitchen, bustling around like the lady of the house. She wore an apron, humming tunes, appearing joyous. While I was well aware of her intentions, it was clear that even with Alice out of the picture, I had no intentions of building a relationship with her, especially since things were still unresolved between Alice and me. I coolly remarked, you focus on that, I'll go rest for a bit, although I lay on the bed, sleep evaded me. My thoughts oscillated between whether the woman I saw in the parking lot was Alice and contemplating if my actions with Christine were too impulsive. Tossing and turning, I found the clock striking six, prompting me to emerge from the room to find Christine had laid out a meal on the table. Lost in my thoughts, I ate in silence, regretful of my lack of restraint and the unanticipated encounter with Christine. Despite the possibility of Alice's infidelity, my lack of concrete evidence led me to betray her unequivocally. Conscious of my actions, I spoke to Christine, despite all these years, you're still as charming as ever. Christine sighed, expressing envy for the happiness Alice and I shared at home. I advised her to seek a stable life, highlighting her desirability. With an affectionate look in her eyes, Christine confessed her desire to find the person from the past who tied a red string around her wrist. This red string incident occurred during our university days when Christine confessed her feelings, and I turned her down. Tearfully, she brandished a red string, a keepsake from her grandmother, saying that only her beloved could tie it, and she vowed to never love again or marry. Under her threat to jump off the eighth floor, I reluctantly tied the red string to end her romantic pursuits. After that event, Christine vanished from my sight, and I presumed she'd be out of my life forever. Unexpectedly, fate brought us together again, culminating in a precarious encounter and suggesting an unresolved connection between us. I sensed Christine's reappearance carried deeper motives, hinted at by her cryptic comments. As she spoke oddly, referencing the red string incident, confusion clouded my thoughts. I lifted my head and advised Christine, why confine your life with a red string? After all these years, we should have matured. A mysterious smile lingered on Christine's face as she cryptically remarked, one day, I'll have you untie the red string you tied on my wrist years ago. Perplexed, I gazed at her, pondering the hidden meaning behind her words. During dinner, when I was lying on the bed lost in thought, I received over a dozen unfamiliar multimedia messages on my phone around a dozen photos. As I viewed the images, cold sweat began to form on my forehead. These photos captured the midday tryst between Christine and me in the car, clearly showing our faces. One photo featured a close-up of Christine, biting her lip with a look of intoxication, and another captured my gnashing teeth. Several other images depicted faceless nude shots of us, but our identities were discernible. I immediately tried to call back, but the phone was already powered off. I angrily slammed my phone to the ground I had been set up. The high-quality photos indicated they couldn't have been taken covertly, the only explanation was that someone had installed a camera in my car, capturing the video from which these screenshots were extracted. My first suspicion fell on Christine, but I dismissed the idea quickly. There were more photos of her than me, so it was obviously the work of a man. Could it be Alice? 
Her recent actions seemed suspicious, and with her devious methods, this act wouldn't be unprecedented. However, Alice usually drove her own car and rarely asked me to drive her, and she hadn't been in my car recently. Could she have installed the camera earlier? The last possibility was that I had offended someone outside, seeking to manipulate me by collecting evidence against me. If this was the scenario, it was a terrifying prospect. Yet, the current circumstances pointed towards this being the most likely explanation, someone was out to get me. I headed downstairs to the car and noticed a pendant charm, a car accessory gifted to me by Alice. Gazing closely, I found a miniature camera in the doll's left eye. Dislodging the camera from its place, the doll's smiling face retained a terrifying expression. Stepping out of the car, I didn't rush back inside but instead smoked a cigarette, staring blankly at my villa in the despised moonlight. Despite it being my home, I hesitated to enter, fearing the implications of my evening with Christine. The villa resembled a lurking monster under the dim moonlight, and stepping inside seemed akin to walking into the beast's belly. As I hesitated, feeling unsure of whether to enter, a tap on my shoulder brought me back to reality. Turning around, I saw a gray-haired, sharp-witted elderly man named Austin, our neighbor and Alice's godfather. Eighty years old, Austin and Alice's father had been comrades in arms and their children had grown up together. Alice's father had aspired to be in-laws with Austin, but the plan was thwarted by their children's choice in life partners. However, Austin had never been fond of me and had always kept his distance. I was puzzled by his sudden approach. In an unusual turn of events, Austin approached me with a gentle smile, suggesting that I should return home instead of standing there lost in thought insinuating a disagreement with Alice. He mentioned that couples arguing were common and advised a man to be magnanimous, urging me to apologize and cheer up Alice. Unable to explain the intriguing situation to him, I remained silent. As Austin was about to speak again, the door of my house opened, and Christine emerged, warmly greeting me, Darling, you're back, this is unbelievable, when did I become her darling? What if Austin misunderstands my relationship with Christine and tells Alice's father about it? I glanced nervously at Austin, I had expected him to be furious, but his gaze was firmly fixed on Christine. It dawned on me that Christine was adorned in a thin silk robe, its crimson hue failing to conceal her alluring figure, exuding a subtle seduction. I was perplexed by Austin's behavior, being 80 years old, his overt attention was unbecoming. Christine seemed unaware of my presence and discreetly adjusted her robe before casting a quick glance at Austin. She then beckoned me inside. Her actions swift and smooth. As the door closed behind her, Austin remained transfixed before finally exclaiming, Christine, Christine. I abruptly shut the door, cutting off his reprimanding words. Christine, now in a sheer nightgown, lounged on the couch watching TV lazily. The dim lamplight accentuated her allure, her appearance captivating. I swallowed hard and asked, why aren't you sleeping yet? Christine softly replied, I can't sleep, and suddenly rose from the sofa, slowly sauntering towards me. I instinctively encircled her slender waist, the sweet fragrance of her skin enveloping me. Lost in her alluring gaze, I felt myself succumbing to her charm. Venting my anger and shame, I let my emotions guide me, a path Christine seemed pleased with. The atmosphere in the house grew stifling, prompting me to seek solace on the balcony. Within minutes, Christine appeared in casual attire, inquiring, Evan, what's wrong? I forced a smile and muttered, I can't sleep. Lost in my thoughts, I barely registered Christine's words. Her face evoked memories of the intense passion from the previous night, stirring a physical response within me. After Christine left, I pondered why such a beautiful woman indulged in such decadent games, questioning the mesmerizing allure of such activities that even women like Alice couldn't resist. As I wondered, my phone on the table unexpectedly rang. I hesitated 
debating whether to answer, anticipating yet another lie. The phone kept ringing for a minute, unanswered, and I received a text from Alice, my dear, I need to stay a few more days in San Francisco, followed by several kiss emojis. A scornful smile played on my lips, the woman of deceit. Juggling Alice's deceit with my mounting work tasks, I immersed myself in a pile of files, trying to focus on professional tasks. Upon returning to the neighborhood, I witnessed Christine accompanying Austin on a walk, a surreal scene that boggled my mind. Utterly perplexed by the sight of Christine walking with a stranger like Austin, particularly recalling his unsettling gaze from the night before, I felt a surge of revulsion. Christine! I called out to them from behind. Christine turned her head to see me and joyfully exclaimed, Evan, you're back. Come, let me introduce you, this is my new godfather, Austin. Godfather? What a mess. Who goes around calling someone a godfather after just meeting them for a day? I retorted to Christine, congratulations, Christine, on meeting such a great godfather. Sensing my sarcasm. Christine shot me a sneaky look and playfully clung to Austin's arm, coquettishly stating, Godfather, you have to protect me if someone bullies me from now on. After bidding farewell to Austin and Christine, I returned to my own home, collapsing on the soft couch with a pillow cradled against me for comfort, a gesture believed to enhance one's sense of security. When Christine returned, I lightly tapped on her door. Amusedly, she teased, Evan, why are you avoiding me? Although we've been in bed together, rest assured I won't cling onto you, without hesitation, I entered, gently closing the door behind me. With a soft voice, I asked, Christine, can we talk? Christine glanced at me, turned away from her computer, and softly inquired, what do you want to talk about, summoning my courage, I questioned her, are you and Alice playing some thrilling games, like the rumored master-servant dynamic? Taken aback, Christine burst into laughter, mocking, Evan, you're twisted. Do you really think I'd engage in that? Angrily, I pressed, it's not about me, are you playing this with Alice? Christine's arms crossed, retorting, why should I tell you? The more you want to know, the less I'll share, in a fit of anger, I rummaged through Christine's black handbag, emptying its contents onto the bed, toy gadgets and assorted items scattered across the sheets. Dumbfounded, Christine blushed, caught off guard by my sudden intrusion. With a steely gaze, I demanded, do you have anything else to say? Christine erupted in rage, accusing me of invading her privacy. To which I retorted, what about Alice? Did you involve her in your games? Christine brazenly replied, why should I tell you? The more you inquire, the less I reveal, her challenge escalated, and Christine dared, would you hit me for the truth? Stunned, I hesitated before recalling her previous self-inflicted punishment, feeling an odd mix of excitement and reluctance. Urging me on, Christine handed over handcuffs, goading, come on, let's start. I can teach you if needed, trembling, I secured Christine's hands behind her back, and she knelt before me, egging me on with promises of revealing the truth. An insomniac evening ensued until I drifted to sleep well past four in the morning. The encounters with Christine had defied moral boundaries, offering glimpses into a new world of arousal and dark satisfaction. Yet thoughts lingered, why was Alice involved in such games? Despite her privileged upbringing, intelligence, and charm, she remained a mystery, captivating all who crossed her path. After work, I sailed through challenges effortlessly, achieving my current success without breaking a sweat. For a woman like Alice, her life was nothing short of perfect, free from setbacks and blemishes. Perhaps her pursuit of perfection led her to explore the sensation of being trodden upon? I recalled reading about individuals excessively pursuing perfection who would veer further down that path, when worldly desires failed to satisfy their needs, they would seek out challenges. Alice had now opened the gateway to her inner darkness, prompting me to reflect. Should I follow her into the abyss or remain in the reality I knew? 
Alice's behavior began to make sense to me, despite being husband and wife, we never delved into each other's inner worlds. I felt a surge of compassion and guilt towards her. With a renewed sense of responsibility, I no longer harbored animosity towards Alice. Reflecting on our shared experiences, from the initial spark of love to career successes, marriage, and parenthood, I acknowledged the colorful imprint she had left on my life. Eventually, my thoughts shifted towards aiding Alice through therapy upon her return. The following morning dawned bright and serene, mirroring my restored inner peace. Pretending nothing had happened, I greeted Christine and joined her for breakfast. Christine was not Alice, I refused to empathize with her indulgent behavior. As I contemplated how to broach the subject with Christine, she spoke first, suggesting, Evan, I think it's best if I move to a hotel. With Alice away, it's not suitable for us to live together. I believe it's time for me to move out. I responded indifferently, that works. I'll take you to the hotel later, after breakfast, I dropped Christine off at the hotel. On the fourth day, Alice returned in the evening, her gaze oscillating between anger and tenderness, devoid of warmth or affection. I met her eyes coolly, akin to strangers meeting. Uncertain of her actions during her time away, Alice likewise remained unaware of my recent endeavors. Evan, what's going on between you and Christine? Alice's piercing question broke the silence directing my attention to a pile of photos she flung on the floor. I felt a sinking sensation as I recognized the scandalous snapshots undeniable proof of the intimate encounter with Christine in the car. Stunned, I was at a loss for words. My mind reeled how had things escalated from a desire to help Alice to this situation. Were the photos deliberately delivered to her, or had she orchestrated the scandal herself? A string of questions swirled inside as I stammered, how did you get these photos, you don't need to worry about that. I just want a reasonable solution, Alice asserted, devoid of emotion, seeking a pragmatic resolution to our turmoil. Seeing her expressionless face, I felt as though she might utter the word divorce at any moment. But we couldn't divorce yet, I hadn't figured out who the master she acknowledged really was. As the situation teetered out of control, I intervened in time. Placing a hand on her shoulder, I gently reassured her, Darling, hear me out. Today is too late, let me think about it and give you an answer later. Alice paused, seeming on the brink of saying something but hesitated before agreeing. Brushing my hand away, she took a deep breath and turned to utter, I don't want to see you today. Let's talk tomorrow. With a resounding bang, Alice slammed the door shut, the night air sending shivers down my arm. I couldn't wait any longer. Tonight, I had to uncover the truth. And I needed to start with Christine. Determined, I drove to the hotel where I had recently dropped Christine off. Inside. I found her lying in bed in sleepwear, legs invitingly exposed, mesmerized by the screen before her. As I entered, Christine looked up surprised, covering herself with the sheets. Evan, why are you here? She inquired, curious at my unexpected visit. Suppressing my inner turmoil, I calmly stated, I need to know who this so-called master is. I delved into a series of questions, demanding to know their motives and why they got Alice involved. Christine hesitated for a moment, then suggested, so many questions. You'll have to serve me well tonight. With a sensual smile, she lifted the covers, revealing her enticing figure, and offered me a whip from the drawer. My mind was consumed with curiosity, and as I glanced at her alluring expression, my impulsive urges miraculously subsided. Without hesitation, I accepted the whip and struck her leg. Tell me, what are they up to? Her cry of pain mingled with pleasure, Christine explained. The master assigns us tasks typically involving seduction and recording men we sleep with for a generous fee. As her eyes glinted with greed, she added, I can never earn that amount in a lifetime, increasing my assault, I persisted, 
Why does the master film these encounters? Christine revealed, to gather leverage on the clients who often turn out to be married women, once they secure evidence, these women demand a divorce, leaving the men with nothing, another lash fell, prompting Christine to share tearfully, they keep all the assets for themselves. The truth dawned on me. Christine's voice wavered, and she murmured, Alice also wants you to join us, or else you'll end up like those men. The revelation struck me like a lightning bolt, all our years of marriage meant nothing to her. The thought of Alice wanting to involve me was inconceivable, determined to dismantle this scheme, I returned home the next day. When I returned, Alice had already freshened up, her face expressionless. Facing her once more, I couldn't muster the same composure as the day before. Evan, I'll get straight to the point, she calmly stated after taking a sip of tea. She decisively issued an ultimatum for our marriage, I no longer have feelings for you, pick a date of divorce, anticipating her request, I inquired, how will we divide the assets? Alice's unexpected response caught me off guard as she requested two properties for herself. Although she sought 80% of the shared assets, she refrained from asking me to leave entirely, maintaining a sense of past affection. Challenging her, I countered, that's not possible Alice's eyes widened in response, emphasizing the evidence of my infidelity and threatening to take me to court. Despite her emotional outburst, I maintained a calm demeanor and a cryptic smile hovered at the corner of my lips. As she locked her gaze on me, I cautiously spoke, what if I told you I already know your secrets? The revelation left Alice frozen in place, her eyes wide as saucers. I continued, don't think I'm unaware, those photos were orchestrated by you. It was you who sent Christine. And you were behind the miniature camera hidden in the doll's eye, these were all my speculations, and I wagered on whether Alice would falter under the pressure. Her countenance shifted from calm to stormy, and swallowing hard, she incredulously retorted, you have no evidence, my heart sank upon realizing Alice's orchestrated deception. However, my resolve remained firm, along with a tinge of regret. The chat log between you and Christine, even if it's deleted, the authorities can retrieve it, I explained. Alice slumped back in her chair, fingers tightly gripping the table, her defiance waning. After a tense silence, she finally asked, What do you want? Raising the teacup to my lips, I took a sip. I also wish to join your scheme, I stated calmly. Alice's angered muttering towards Christine shifted into a wary gaze on me. Evan, don't play games, she cautioned suspiciously. I continued persuasively, I earn more money now, and what's more, it's a group effort. Why not indulge? Sensing a crack in her resolve, I continued coaxing, I'll split the profits in your favor, ultimately, the temptation of wealth proved too enticing for Alice. After contemplation, she reluctantly let her guard down. Fine, I'll introduce you to the master another day, securing her trust was just the beginning of our agreement. However, a solo effort to dismantle this scheme wouldn't suffice. I needed an alliance, and the seduced men were ideal pawns. With a plan in mind, I considered the behavioral patterns of Alice, particularly her morning routine. My sleep was superficial in anticipation of my plan, and as soon as I awoke, I was alert. Silently sneaking into the bathroom as Alice showered, I found her cell phone under the pillow, unlocked it with her birth date, and delved into her conversations. The app displayed a row of red marks, indicating unread messages, each marked with names and dates a clear indicator of their significance. At this point, I didn't have time to ponder deeply. Hastily, I used my phone to record all the information as evidence. Then, I entered a recent chat box, took a snapshot of the personal information page, and later planned to use this to contact him. With the information in hand, I returned to the room and added him on WhatsApp using the details I obtained. This person's name was George, and he had been chatting with Alice for a few months. I organized my thoughts and disclosed everything to him. 
Initially, George was incredulous, but after watching the video evidence I provided, he reluctantly believed my words. Hong Ji, let's take down this organization together, he proposed. His voice was hoarse with determination as he asked, What can I do? With his alliance, the situation became simpler. Although the video evidence I possessed wasn't sufficient to prove the existence of the illegal group, another video of Alice seducing victims needed to be recorded. Then, I planned to call the police during the act to catch them off guard. As I contemplated the next steps, a message popped up on my phone, a meeting with the master was arranged for the day after next. It couldn't have played out any better, this presented an opportunity to catch them all at once. In the blink of an eye, it was the day to meet the master. I couldn't deny feeling nervous, so I discreetly placed a miniature camera in my shirt collar. As a precaution, the footage would be sent to George in real time in case of any emergencies. As Alice led me, we drove to a luxury bathhouse. She guided me to the pool area where only a few individuals remained, all seemingly in service to the master. This is Evan, Alice introduced me respectfully. I was momentarily stunned by her demeanor before composing myself and greeting, Hello, I'm Evan, eager to join our organization, the man lazily turned his head and emitted a cold snort in response. Surprised by his harsh tone, I struggled to respond, Hello, I am Evan, and I am keen to contribute to our cause, expressing flattery, I pitched myself eagerly, assuredly pledging my commitment to the assigned tasks and discretion. However, Alice's disdainful expression was palpable. Don't worry, all tasks will be completed discreetly, and no third party will know, I assured. Upon hearing this, the man furrowed his brows and gestured prompting his men to approach. They swiftly restrained me, conducting a thorough search. My heart raced, fearing the discovery of the hidden camera in my collar. Despite their scrutiny, the search yielded no results. They released me, reporting back to the man. Adjusting his robe, he gave me a cold glare and commented, You're suspicious. He ordered the use of a detector, fueling my anxiety. The detector neared, and with a trembling voice, I maintained composure, questioning, I don't understand, why do you say that? The man identified my overeagerness and precise secrecy as dubious, suggesting a deceptive or ulterior motive. As the detector approached, I gulped nervously, sweat beating on my forehead. The device emitted a beeping sound upon passing over my neck. A henchman discovered the hidden camera in my collar, and on the man's order, the device was destroyed in front of everyone. His stern expression softened slightly as a colleague lit his cigarette. So, what's your objective, he demanded, simmering with anger. The atmosphere was tense, and at this point, I was beyond words. I hoped George would quickly call the police. All right, I won't beat around the bush, I remained calm outwardly, even though my insides were in turmoil. Pushed to the edge, I spoke my mind, no longer holding back. Have you never felt guilty about this line of work? Using money from illicit sources, frankly, it's repulsive, the man finally lost his composure, shouting, get him. In an instant, his henchmen surrounded me, raining down punches that I couldn't retaliate against. Every part of my body was engulfed in pain, yet I clenched my teeth to suppress the agonizing groans. The physical agony numbed me and upon opening my eyes, I saw blood everywhere. With a derisive scoff, the man remarked, a tough nut won't even cry out as the physical assault momentarily halted, I caught my breath. But before I could recover, they switched to a different form of torture. Several men tossed me into the pool, submerging me in ice-cold water. My struggles to resurface were met with force, pushing me back down. Water filled my eyes, mouth, and nose, choking me and making it difficult to breathe. Deaf to all sound and with vision blurred, I only had one thought, why hadn't the police arrived yet? My survival was uncertain. After several rounds of torment, as my heartbeat slowed, there was a moment of near acceptance of my fate. 
Just as I succumbed to the darkness, I faintly heard a loud noise. I fought to the surface, hearing muffled words, police, don't move, upon regaining consciousness, I found myself in the hospital. George had alerted the police in time, saving me from the brink of death. With a team of officers, they apprehended the entire organization, and Alice, facing legal consequences, would spend the following years behind bars. Our marriage ended as planned, with her leaving with nothing. However, after the dust settled, I could no longer contact Christine. Despite searching for her through all known contacts, she had vanished without a trace, as if she had never existed in this world.